taking minutes, which is nice. Um, I was just saying, I'm going to give an update of the chaos board meeting that was on Tuesday, but many of you were, you were at that meeting. So. <laughs> so I'm getting a little bit of feedback. No, oh, good. Gone. All right. So why don't I go ahead and, and get started? I know not all of you were at the board meeting, so I'm sure you would like an update of kind of what uh, was going on there. Um, so the the board meeting took updates from the working groups, which was great, and then op updates from the software committees, which we can get uh, again today. So I think a um, couple of things that I, I'd like to bring forward was, and comments are welcome here, is one of the things that we decided with respect to the metrics work group was that we were going to actually deprecate the metrics um, GitHub repository page and just create a page called chaos slash metrics. And the rationale for this was that a lot of the metrics work is occurring inside of the current work groups, which are DNI and growth maturity and decline. And trying to maintain um, trying to maintain metrics on both areas didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. All right, so for those of you that weren't in the board meeting, if you have questions on that, um, I'm kind of open to, to thoughts that you might have on that as well. So again, premise was to deprecate the chaos metrics page on GitHub build a new chaos slash metrics page and really just use that chaos metrics page as a way to to link to the the metrics work that's occurring in the work group. So we could also use the the chaos metrics page as kind of the official releases of the metrics and points in time. Ben, did you have any comments on that? Did I hit that kind of right? Um yeah, for the most part. Yeah. We're gonna deprecate it and then kind of standardize the two working group read me is to an extent to show that they're part of a singular entity or singular project um, and create some sort of shared um, references to the two of them. So on the website, essentially we'll have just a page that explains the two repositories and why they're there and how to use them. And I actually think the, have the both working groups have a, an issue around the readme? Yeah, yeah, so I created an issue with my plans in both working groups. Um, anyone can comment on it, provide feedback. Yeah, and I think on the diversity and inclusion side, Nicole is going to reach out to you, Ben, because she's been, um, she's doing some work on that and also on the uh, contribution guide to make it more accessible for new contributors. But yeah, okay. I don't think she's working in GitHub for that right now, so. Got you. Um, other kind of comments on on this metrics issue and the deprecation of the GitHub repo metrics page. I think the general premise is, is we just we really just want to highlight the work that's occurring in the work groups. Uh, Matt, uh, something that was not completely clear, I realized it after the meeting, is that how we are going to release the metrics when, when we have, let's say, a stable version. So we were talking about that slash metrics um, web page and stuff like that, but it's not completely clear. Maybe we can we can discuss the details sure. of how that during the next weeks. Yeah, I mean, we could even open it up right now just a little yeah. bit. This isn't a hugely formal meeting. So we, if you recall, we've actually had a discussion about metrics releases in the past. Anybody remember that on the email list yeah. and about how we kind of stamp uh, those metrics? Um, some people kind of lean towards versioning, that we would just actually have versions. Um, other people said that with the, the date, date stamping that occurs in the repository, that that's, that's good enough. So we never really settled on, um, on how we would consider the different versions of metrics. So if people have thoughts on this, I'd, I'd love to hear it. I know that the working groups are kind of ever evolving. 
Is, is there ever going to be a point where you're going to want to refer back to a previous version of the metric? Like, Leave that anyone, to the like I, I'm saying like as a, as a user, are oh. they ever going to have a need for a previous version of a metric or are they always going to be interested in the most recent version of it? That's interesting. Well, Implementations could be interesting because they could be saying like I'm supporting this and this version of the metrics definitions, for instance. Okay. Uh, hi, hello guys. Uh, my name is Robert Sanchez. Um, new is my first session in this uh, this group. Hey, Robert. Um, uh, I, I just want to pitch in a little bit. Um, yeah. Working a reason I'm joining the group is because it's interesting to me. I'm working for a company that is actually we do metrics and we do measurements, also as well. And uh, a, I got a question about this about the releases. A, normally, yeah. we as a company in my job, you know, we uh, we review the the metrics and whenever we find a discrepancies on it, we we note that and we deprecate those and we release uh, a, a new and basically all all metrics, uh, you know, they're, they're no longer valid. So uh, is there a reason to keep uh, all metrics? Shouldn't they be just automatically deprecated and say, okay, this is, what, what is the, the reason uh, there's a new version of the, the metrics? So the process has never worked completely because we have not yet released anything. Okay. But the idea is that at some point uh, the, the working groups release a version of the metrics. And some implementation, which could be done by Chaos or by any third party, could be saying, I'm supporting this version. Maybe the version is going to evolve in the future because there is a new release of the metrics definitions. And for any reason, the company or the people implementing it cannot afford to follow them to the new uh, version. And they can say, we are still supporting version 1.0, but we are no, not supporting version 2.0, for instance. Then for reference, you should be uh, having a way of looking at what version 1.0 is. That's what I mean. So quite similar to what happens in internet standards, for instance. Right, uh, but what is the, well, since I'm really fairly new, I mean, what, what is the standard to, a, I mean, I suppose when once you set up a, a metric and there, there's a valid a case for this metric and the only reason you're going to update it is because uh, there were faults or the, the metric uh, give you false measures or, or it was simply it got upgraded and got, got prettier, got better and uh, shouldn't really much affect, uh, it should be pretty easy for anybody to to really implement it into their products, right? So, so I, well, I think well, I understand why this, how to explain this. So when, when we define a metric, that metric is calculated a certain way. If we change how that metric is defined in the future, it could potentially change how that metric is calculated. But the software is still going to be using whatever the, the previous calculation was. So until they've updated it to use the new calculation, it would be nice to be able to indicate we're using a slightly ver older version of calculation for this metric. You know, we have formulas for each of the metrics that or we're working on formulas for each of the metrics that we define. Correct. I understand that. We're doing the same thing. Exactly. And yes, and we have, uh, we have older, a, uh, okay. We, we have uh, an, an analyzer that, that we deploy. And we have older versions and uh, those versions, of course, you know, we, we made recommendations to our customers to a, a upgrade to, to the latest. And whenever there's a discrepancies in our metrics, we let them know also as well. And uh, it's recommended always to, to upgrade. But that's the general process that we follow. So that, that I was trying to just but kind, Robert, of, in, kind in of run it. In right. summary, I would say that the reasons are the same ones that you have for maintaining uh, HTTP version one and HTTP version two. Right. And still everybody knows that the HTTP version two is better, but still there are some uh, things that are old for whatever the reason, and they still need to know, if I'm saying I'm supporting only HTTP version one, I need to know what's that. And then I need a reference to the standard. If, even when everybody goes to the IETF and they find out that all well, this standard is deprecated because there is a new one, but I still, you keep a version of the old one. I think that we can do something similar. Still, it's a bit preliminary because we didn't release anything, so it's a bit <laughs> early, I think. 
But, but you had a version on it, right? I mean, you have, uh, do you have like a stamp on, on your, I haven't really looked into it. No, yeah, no, I, I, think, think, I think we should, I think we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, uh, that's pretty wise, you know, just to keep track on, uh, have a version and then just continue the version and on the, yeah. in the code. And so, then, let me, so let me then, uh, if I agree, um, so I would actually then push it back to the work, work groups on DNI and growth, maturity, and decline. Those are our two main work groups. Um, if this is where the metrics development work is occurring, do you have thoughts on when versioning would occur on those metrics? Is it when all of the focus areas are built out? Is it when one of the focus areas is built out and the other three or four may be empty at that time? I think that should be done by the working groups themselves. But in, in the case of GMD where you know, I'm participating a bit more, uh, my impression is that we should release as soon as we have some focus area then so that we can release something like a 1.0 saying we are only supporting for now this in these uh, focus areas. Okay. And uh, in the next release, we are supporting more focus areas and so on, just because we need to deliver. But this is just um, my vision of the project. So we have been organizing for a while, and I think that we should be starting to deliver things that people can implement as okay. soon as possible. And uh, that makes, right now, it's impossible to release all the focus area in a short time. Yep. So I would say once we have a couple of them, that would be nice. But DNI could be different, so I don't know the details. Any thoughts from DNI folks? So I've been, ever since we started this conversation, my understanding has evolved a little. And while I was against versioning in the beginning, I do think it is valuable now. And I like the CSS model where you we have different standards evolving at different uh, rates. So each metric gets its own version number and that allows us to update uh, one metric without having to uh, increase the version number on all the other metrics. So it would be a version on the metric, not necessarily a version on a, a DNI release. So that's, and actually that's, that is sensible. That, uh, that makes sense. Okay. So I would be in, in, in the case of CMD, I would be more in favor of releasing in packages, like we are releasing now a version of uh, this and these focus areas. And version 1.0 includes this, and then version 1.5 or whatever. And not the specific metrics, just for simplicity, so that you can say, I am supporting this version of the chaos metrics, and not I'm supporting all of this version of all of these chaos metrics, which is a bit different. But I, I think that's something that we can decide later on when we are starting to release. Could um, could then I, I ask the working groups to bring this up as an issue within the working groups as to how they think about versioning? Because the question then would be, do the working groups need to version in the same way? And do they have to have the same cadence of release? And I don't mm -hmm. know the answer to that. But Matt, for now we need a release, which we don't have yet. I totally, totally agree. <laughs> I completely, yeah, right. So to your point, I mean, maybe I think it's better if we just kind of start moving it forward, and then. No, I mean, I mean, I completely agree with you all that we need a release model. But I'm, 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 I'm sorry, but I'm quite concerned about releasing uh, something sensible as soon as possible, maybe. and. Um, but I agree that we need to do it in the right way and we need to do that considering version. And so maybe we can have the discussion in parallel. That would be really great. Right. Uh, uh, but you know, the, the, there will be an understanding from the, uh, the user community that these are a beta releases or there, or there has to be some warning to say, hey, you know, this is a better release, you know, you set your own risk. And uh, there's gotta be some point where they, where you start doing a release and from there on, you know, just stick to that. And then as, as you work on it, and then you just, I mean, you guys are setting up uh, actually the standards. So, you know, it's, uh, it, that would be setting up also the example as well. 
Now, having been our releases for discussion or following the IETF model of uh, request for comments instead of direct releases of the standard, pretty sensible, I think. And maybe we can try now, in, I hope for hopefully in a few weeks when we have the first things to do. Yeah. But that's something I, I, I would certainly consider. So not a process of saying this is the standard, let's go to the next version, but trying to have a process where the community can comment on the standard before the standard gets set on a stone. That's sensible, I think. Cool. Um, so a few more updates from the board meeting. The board agreed to um, to to accommodate to, to expand representation in the board uh, for all working groups. So right now we really don't have representation from the DNI working group. And so the board agreed to um, that that was an important issue. A couple people from DNI have expressed interest. So I'll be circulating. So thank you for that, uh, Georg and Don. And I'll be um, circulating that to the board here shortly. I haven't done it yet, but just kind of circulating that. So thanks for um, providing that information. Uh, and then also kind of sticking with this thing start in the work groups. Um, the chaos project is considering uh, goals for 2019. So the, um, really the, the premise here is to ask the work groups to define what the goals are for, for them. And that those goals from the work groups are really what uh, help define the goals for the chaos project overall. I don't think we want to be out of sync where we would define chaos goals at a high level and those goals uh, differ or force working groups to work in certain ways. So I know that the DNI group is putting together a set of goals. I assume that's still moving forward and for 2019 and uh, the growth maturity and decline work group is going to be doing the same thing. I do think one of the things that came from the board discussion was that 2019 can, should hopefully really start focusing on, on reference implementations of the focus areas or the metrics within the focus areas. So starting to see these in, in practice. Right? That was mm -hmm. a, a big issue. So, um, to yeah. some Pretty new. I, I just got a question. I mean, you, you're sure. talking about these two, uh, two different groups, and I, I noticed that you have uh, a one that is really interesting is the community-driven metrics, uh, developers' work. Yep. And uh, I've been following uh, Jesus' work for quite some time already. So, Thank glad you. to see you finally in person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And great fan of the stuff that you're doing. And, uh, but I've been sitting on the background. I've been sitting just in the background because I'm, I'm working in industry. And, uh, but uh, somehow it is what you are doing, it converges into, into the area of work, of, of my, my work. And uh, although we are doing other metrics that you guys are not doing, you're not presenting over there, which are really, really important for the, the industry. And this, I think um, some metrics that you guys should be probably thinking about uh, maybe setting up and uh, setting up a, a, a little bit of uh, a cornerstone, so to say, because uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've looked around all the products, all, you know, all the different offerings and pretty much everybody's doing things, uh, things their own way. And uh, in the metrics that are important, which is a, uh, what you're doing is really is really great, and in the European community, it's it's a little bit of uh, um, a little bit of taboo because uh, in the industry they don't want to GDPR, you know, it's a mm -hmm. protection, you know, identity. They don't want to talk about that. But outside, for the, for good or for bad reasons, there's a lot of uh, value into these metrics. But there are other metrics that they're interested on, you know, it's like quality, uh, risk. And, uh, and those you evaluate via other different metrics, which are, um, uh, it's, a little bit of, uh, it's a little bit difficult to implement them because you have to set up a parser for each, each language and then each language you have to go through each different version because you know, you got Java, Java 6, you got Java whatever, you know, and each one works different. So you have to change your parsers to adapt to that. 
But those are metrics that the industry really is looking for also as well to complement what you are doing. What you guys are doing is, is really fantastic. And sad to say we haven't got there, even though I've been preaching and saying, look at these guys, what they're doing. You know, this is great work. And this is where we should be aiming to. But they tiptoe around it because it's like, well, you know, our customers don't want to uh, get into that part. So this is one of the reasons I'm joining this group because I, I really want to follow up on what you guys are doing. I get more experience on what you guys are doing. And maybe if, you know, possible, maybe pitching and what in, in what I see from our customers. Yeah, there are two um, things that you mentioned there, Robert. And Jesus, I'll let you chime in too. But um, one is mm-hmm. also, also in, the, in the growth maturity and decline work group, we really haven't gotten it off the ground yet, but a couple of things that we are going to be looking at in that is risk, as you mentioned, Robert, um, and then quality, what you called quality, I think is what we're calling value. So these are metrics that we really haven't started to define yet. Um, and then if you, if you do want to participate, the growth maturity and decline work group does meet on Wednesdays at this time um, okay. on, on the same, same link. If you need more information, I can share that with you. Thanks, Matt. I was exactly going to invite you, Robert, to the meeting tomorrow because okay. the, the working group now is in the process of defining the different focus areas. And one of the focus areas, which is still uh, to be defined in detail, is precisely risk. And as, uh, as Matt said, bandwidth, which probably is a way of saying quality. Up to now, we have avoided uh, um, doing source code analysis. Uh, because there are many tools doing that and many even the standards doing that. But maybe that's something that we need to include into the metrics. So um, up to now, nobody has led that path. If you are interested in that, that's something that we can certainly um, talk about in the in the context of the GMD working group. I think that everybody is going to be very interested in worrying about that. I don't want, I, I got to warn you guys, you know, just, just from the get-go, I'm not a developer. So I'm, okay. a, I'm a product manager. I, I manage product. I do the... Um, <clears throat> I interface with the customer, I deploy the, the, the product and I follow up, I get the feedback from the customer mm-hmm. and send it back to, to the development teams. So this is where my experience comes from, you don't know, from actual coding, but I know the, the, the work process and, and, and I know a lot of the uh, pain points from a lot of the customers, which is in the, the actual production, you know, continuous integration, continuous development, the pipeline and finding uh, that uh, a uh, the flow and finding out what is it that makes tick their teams and, uh, and how to balance that and uh, this is something that I think our tool does really well in in, in some ways and uh, because of the metrics that we're using mm-hmm. but it's really difficult uh, the, the learning curve in it because it's, it's really techy it's typical yeah. German you know <laughs> it's a German company <laughs> right. okay. No, but that's fine because the idea of the working groups is to put together developers doing the software for analyzing the metrics with people knowing about how to use the metrics and what kind of metrics they want and which kind of questions they have. So it's not a matter of being a developer for being um, active in the working groups. So you can okay. be active by the way of, first of all, we have use cases, which basically is, I want to, to, to come to this goal by asking these questions and for answering those questions, I need some metrics. And if you know everything about that, maybe you cannot implement anything, but still you can define all the process from the goal to the metrics that are needed to, 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 to direct to that goal. And, uh, and second, even if you don't know about the details of the uh, implementation of the metrics, maybe you can talk about how do you want the metrics to be. And you can uh, talk about the details, not for implementing, but for the semantics of them, so how they should be defined. So you are more than welcome tomorrow if you want to come. All right, thank you. Okay, so we're um, half past, and I I wanted to bring up, um, I know we normally do updates from the work groups, and I still wanna have that. Um, But one of the things that I would like to do is, on the agenda, point five is with respect to to outreach, um, and I don't mean, this isn't meant to be outreach in the sense of um, chaos involvement in say chaos con or Linux con Europe or Linux con North America or anything like that. But I brought this up in the DNI meeting 
on Monday, which was how as a, as a community or as a work, as work groups within that community, can we uh, retain the people who are, are committed to, to advance those work groups, but also begin to think about expanding um, involvement from the many people who are on the, on the chaos list. It's a fairly large, say, email list. But how, what are things that we can do to try to encourage people to participate in these work groups? Because that's really where the work is, is getting done. And the, the DNI group had some, some ideas. Um, I, th I think the, the one idea that I took away, and, and Don and Georg, you could tell me otherwise, but um, it was the identification of, of issues that are fairly uh, low hanging fruit issues, things that people can engage with uh, relatively quickly and relatively easy in the work group. So, uh, you know, if, if D and I, I thought that was a great idea. Um, and posting those to the main chaos list, I, I think, did you say monthly or weekly? I kind of forget, but it's some sort of regular cadence, just, you know, encouraging people to participate on the main chaos mail list. So if, if people have ideas on how to kind of encourage that participation, I'd love to hear it. Um, related to that, making more issues for first time contributions would okay. also be helpful. Just making more issues so people can make contributions? Yeah, just identifying things that are smaller fixes that, okay. that someone could do and just make an issue for them for okay. each one. Yeah, instead of just kind of fixing stuff yourselves, making making issues for things that aren't, you know, aren't causing any problems right now, aren't holding anyone back, that are mm -hmm. things that somebody could easily pick up. And not just promoting it to the chaos list, but also, you know, other other places. You could post it on, I don't know, LinkedIn or mm -hmm. Twitter or someplace to try and get more people involved. But the idea is that having the chances that someone's going to go to your issues list and look through the, the first time contributions is a little bit less than if you send out a list of, Hey, here are the, you know, five things that we really would like some help with. And maybe that would spark some interest because somebody might see something that they're interested in helping with. Okay. Or, I mean, or you even have them open issues themselves. Right. I mean, you know, like, like Don said, if, if you have an issue of like 24, they're, none of them might be interesting, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's possible that they have another like issue they would like somebody to address, but people tend to be shy about like opening up an issue because they think they're asking a dumb question. Right. But okay. Um, yeah. Is there a, is there a style to encourage that? Cause again, we have, yeah. you know, we have probably about a hundred people on the list. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a core set of contributors, which is great. Right. And I really yeah. appreciate that. So it's, it's, so, it's much advertising. Um, so how many people do you actually have that work in the industry? Uh, quite a few, a lot. Yeah, I work, I work for Pivotal, I'm not an academic. All right, so uh, well, basically, you know, the people that are in the industry that are facing customers, they probably, they're the ones that have a lot, a lot of feedback to give you uh, guys. And I mean, you can, you can, uh, Anybody can go and look at a lot of these uh, software uh, offerings and all these metrics that they're, they're offering and what they're trying to solve and uh, just, just bring them up, you know, and just put them up there. Mm -hmm. and in the case of TMD, we have started the use cases exactly for that. So um, maybe we need, in, in our specific case, we need to encourage and, and make it more clear how people can participate by starting um, uh, use cases because they can't even just start them, just saying this is important to me. And maybe some other people can come can later and try to define the questions and all of that. Because the process could be a bit difficult at the first time you try to do it. But I think everyone who is in the industry with specific needs can define, I have this goal, I think it can be done, this can be done with metrics. So then the rest of the working group can help to, to try to find out the questions and metrics for that. Yeah, and I got a question, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious also, I mean, how, since this is open source, I mean, uh, uh, obviously a lot of these vendors, software vendors, a, I don't know, they may feel threatened about uh, having open source tools. I mean, so what is the, a, 
the end result, whenever you guys got some really cool tools that you can offer out there. So you license to, uh, to a, to the industry so they can use him or what is the whole purpose on the, uh, aside being open source metrics? Uh, we don't have a licensing model, <laughs> so that's not the goal of the uh, project. I think the, the goal is really to try to improve our understanding of open source project health and sustainability. That was really the premise of the project. It's, this was, it's the same issue with the uh, private industry. I mean, yeah. they're having the same issue. I mean, it, they, it's yeah. uh, software is still a black hole. Software is one of the biggest uh, issues where there's really no transparency. And, uh, and having metrics, measuring, this is something uh, that, that, that helps uh, people to, to, to track it down and to organize themselves and then sort of uh, find their little nirvana spot, you know, their... Sure. teams you know and this is this is really important for the teams you know it's uh not kidding you <laughs> so i yeah I, I guess i'll this is clearly right i mean this is clearly a um a pain point for a lot of people in in industry um and i think a consolidated effort is what is uh, driving a lot of this a lot of people share these concerns um, I can let the work groups kind of speak on their behalf, but the, you know, the DNI work group, I think it's a way to really foster thinking about diversity and inclusion. It's ways to improve conversation around diversity and inclusion. And I think it's also a way, at least in my mind, um, to think about how we can, uh, what's the data we need to capture a better understanding of these critical issues. That was kind of my, that's kind of my take. And the, the diversity and inclusion work group is a, a, a group of people who are really interested in, in addressing those issues. Yeah, I mean, I think, Robert, I think you get this, seem to be making the assumption that this is mostly um, an academic project. Um, it's very much not. The diversity and inclusion working group is, um, you know, people from Intel, Mozilla. I work at Pivotal. It's no, very no, no. much... I, I don't make it that essential. I've, I've seen the list of, of, of the people, but, you yeah. know... When we say so, reaching out to the people, it's like, well, if you got people in the industry, you know, they're the ones that they have to pitch in. And, and I don't know if they're just holding back and saying, ah, well, you know, I'm not going to give you all, all the goodies. I don't know. <laughs> so I think that most of the people participating in the of, they are familiar, they're familiar with the open source project processes, and they know that by sharing, they usually win more than by hiding this kind of stuff, at least, because it's, let's say, it's common interest for everyone. But, I, but, yes. I, but I see your point. I see your point. So, uh, Definitely, yes, because it has to be set uh, uh, some, some acceptable standards. And, you know, I mean, this has been the... the the, the pain of the ages, you know, since software got invented, uh, since software invented, since software has been written, uh, there's, you know, it's no silver bullet. And uh, one of the things is that it's not measurable. The only thing that we got going on for us in our, in our software is that we can visualize it. Visualization, which is a really, really powerful tool to do that. And, and this is why uh, what Beterja is doing is, is really powerful, doing these visualizations of, of the users. We do it with metrics in a different way. And, uh, but establishing those metrics that are accepted industry-wide, that's what needs to happen. And then whoever does a better implementation or whoever does implementation, you know, people then understand, okay, these are the, the, uh, the metrics that matter. And then you know, the industry adopts these metrics and they use it as the world standard. So let yeah. me uh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, please. So let me um, just kind of go back to encouraging people. Don, I, I don't know if you had a thought that you wanted to finish. Yeah, I don't know. I was interrupted. I lost my train of thought. I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Apologies. Apologies. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, I, I think the I think we're talking about like issues, like encouraging people to open new issues in addition to like working on them. The other thing that I've seen some communities do, uh, I don't know if this makes sense to do in either of the work groups is to have something like an issue bash session. Let's say you have a list of like 30 issues and then 
there might be something that could be combined or like closed right away. And those are some of the easy things that new community members can participate okay. in. And then, and then during their conversation, it, it might be easy for them to say, oh, what about this thing that, you know, does it make sense to open an issue, issue or not? So just an idea. I mean, I've seen some communities do it. And, um, okay, yeah. I got that down. Um, let me ask, um, let me ask the DNI. So Don or Georg and DNI, do you feel like the work that you're doing needs more people at the moment? Do you need more people helping? Or do you think the pace is good? I think we've made a lot of progress. I think the, I think the pace is good, but I think we certainly need, uh, need some more help. There are a lot of metrics that we just haven't had time to define yet. Okay. So, um, so I feel like we've increased the pace quite a bit over the past few months, but um, yeah, we certainly certainly need some help defining more of the more of the metrics so that we can get this kind of, you know, released as we were talking earlier. Okay. Um, okay. Growth maturity and decline. Do you kind of feel the same or? No, I don't think so. I think that we are too slow. We were slow in defining the procedures. And um, I see that the pace at which uh, D and I are, are progressing, and I'm a bit, uh, and I'm inviting them because uh, we are really much more slower. So okay. I would like to have at least one focus area, if possible, two of them defined by the next chaos scheme. But I don't know if we are going to make it. And I think that we need some uh, start because if people don't see something, it's very difficult for them to engage because they, they don't really understand uh, what they can do. So that's why I'm trying to have, uh, we are trying to have some use cases that can be examples for others that can produce them and some focus areas as much work as uh, work out as possible. So you are more than welcome any of you to, to, to collaborate. Okay. So just uh, in response to you, Jesus, um, I don't think we can compare the pace between the work groups easily because we are doing very different kind of work, whereas in DNI, it's mostly creating the documents. You are very much focused on the implementation part and aligning implementations. So it's a very different kind of work and the progress you're making in software is what we're lacking in software. And then, so yeah. anyway, just saying, I wouldn't- yeah, no. Thank you very much for, for the feedback. No, thanks for the feedback. And I also know that GMD has started like uh, some months uh, after DNI started. So we need some time, needed some time for organization on all of that. But it's still, I think that we need to deliver, so honestly. Okay, well, these are very helpful ideas. It's interesting, they all seem to revolve. Can you hear Matt? Oh, <laughs> it's a very, oh, it's a very pragmatic. So that. Yeah, no, I was just, I see that. So I was saying that they, I got, I have like four issues or four things that people uh, encouraged, uh, that put forward to encourage participation and they were all around GitHub issues or issues in general. So I appreciate the very consistent theme. Um, it sounds like it might be a combination of uh, kind of identifying what those issues are and then being more proactive in sharing those issues with the community so that people know what they are. I think Don made the point of maybe having those kind of low hanging issues, but then maybe selecting five. Prioritization. You know, and sharing those. Um, that's great. Um, okay. Uh, well, just, I think I wanted to get that out there. Just so you know, this is very much on my mind as to how we can continue to maintain engagement and encourage new people, even if it's just one person at a time, to participate in the in the work groups. Not looking for a flood of people to come to the work groups, but even just a little bit at a time would be great in my mind. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, any other thoughts on, on that? Um, Georg, I'm gonna give you the floor on your rotating of meeting facilitator and note, note taker explanation. So would you move? Yeah. Would you want to comment on that? So this idea comes out of um, some open leadership principles that the DNI work group has and how we can implement a better way to foster 
um, more shared leadership and to um, prevent gatekeeping and allow for members to and to empower members to really take on work within the project. And one way to do that is to uh, rotate responsibilities um, and to have clearly defined responsibilities. So if you look at the email that I sent uh, and that's linked here in the meeting minutes, the idea is to share who is facilitating and leading meetings and who's taking notes because those are valuable responsibilities within our community. And by sharing them, we build capacity and make our community more robust, uh, increase the bus factor effectively. So the idea is to um, determine who is responsible for sending out the meeting minutes in advance, who is then walking us through during the meeting and keeps us on track, and then also who takes the notes and sends them out to the mailing list afterwards. How we want to do that, if we want to do that, that is up to discussion. This is something the DNI work group decided yesterday to do. So this is still very new and we are still gathering experience, but I wanted to bring it to this meeting for chaos as a whole. It's pre-management 101 and that's, uh, you know, just governance. It does, give, it does give people an opportunity to lead who wouldn't normally get that opportunity, which is also provides opportunities for, for new members. We do this pretty successfully in some other projects, projects. that I work on. And the idea is to ask for volunteers for that, or how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, I'm all for it. <laughs> if other people want to leave, right on. That's super cool. <laughs> Says the guy who gets stuck facilitating all the meetings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really cool by me. <laughs> And I mean, we could even do it in, in the chaos meetings, right? Because this is the, only, the first Tuesday of the month is the formal one that actually has an agenda. The others, I mean, honestly, sometimes they'll take 15 minutes if there's not a huge issue. They just don't take very long, um, so, which I don't know that we would, we can rotate that as well, but maybe we just start with rotating the monthly one because there's really not much facilitation in the other meeting. Is anybody can bring an idea forward. Um, or we can rotate them all. Them all. But, but still in my experience, even in the informal meetings, you need somebody to try to keep things on track in the sense that, you know, those discussions specifically because they are very open can lead you to know anything. And it's very good if somebody from time to time tries to say, please remember that we should be talking, we were talking about this or whatever, you know. I agree. I would, I support. Yes. <laughs> I am cool yeah. by that. What I mean, a moderator, yes, absolutely. So, so maybe, maybe we can try to see whether there are volunteers for doing that. And it could be, I agree with uh, Georg and Dan, that, that could be a way of engaging more people uh, in, in, in a kind of activities that they feel themselves impo important for the trade because those activities are very important. And in, even in some cases, having something like English skills that, for instance, I don't have it's much better for other people that maybe are not that expert in metrics, but they can facilitate that meeting very well, so. Your English so, is great. <laughs> I can understand you. <laughs> English works. The, uh, the way we decided to do it in DNI, and maybe that's one way we can do it here, is that at the end of every meeting, we determine who will facilitate and take notes during, during the next week. And that gives one week for whoever does it to prepare the meeting, uh, the, the agenda, to just be prepared to facilitate, and we can just change it up every week. I mean, I just, I tend to agree with like Matt. I mean, maybe we start off with, with the monthly meeting because uh, I mean, one the other thing I like about the the rest of the week is that it's informal. Like you know, if we have like a formalized roles, it it may I don't know. To me personally, it may seem like the meeting to you seem to a little too stuffy, for lack of a better word, I guess. But I mean, I, I like the fact that for like a monthly ones, we have like a set agendas, and the others are more like for like office hours, right? And you know, I don't I don't know if we need that level of 
you know, formal processes for, for the rest of the month, but I'd like to, love to hear what others think. But. I uh, fully agree with your yeah. point, Ray, that those um, weekly meetings, the hangout mm -hmm. calls, that we should not have the agenda, but I agree with Jesus that we should have someone facilitating who is asking, so. Well, I can always, I'll be at those you know, yeah. ones. I can always just make sure they don't really go off the rails that much. That much. Um, in any case, we can try with the monthly meetings and then find out how it works and then maybe move to the others if we find that's convenient. Maybe only with uh, with the role of a facilitator, not no no minutes, but still having a facilitator. So that's that's something we can decide later when we see how it works in the monthly meetings. So let's do that then. Who wants to volunteer for the January? While we're here, I'll facilitate this volunteer. <laughs> Anybody want to volunteer? It's really not that hard. It's going to be January. Um, it can't be January first, right? Oh, well, so then it'll be it'll be January eighth. We'll just we'll skip the the first. Yeah, I can do it, Daniel. All right, great. Hey, everyone hey, else Daddy. is on mute. <laughs> this is the only thing I said during the whole meeting. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. All right, great. Um, what and then about note taking? I'll take notes. Uh, can I go back uh, to uh, point five, uh, just just briefly? Uh, yeah. If you guys don't mind. No, go ahead. Okay, uh, when you were talking about uh, how to encourage people. Um, yeah. One of the things I, I think, whenever you put some issues, you put some issues out there, but you also have to put some priority on it. So uh, it's same same. Same principle as with any ticketing system. You know, you gotta put the a, the priority on it, and also possibly a due date in it when when should be okay. ideally fixed, and that should give an idea to people. So, oh, okay, we need to do this like right away. Someone needs to take care of it. Otherwise, you know, it, things sit there forever and ever. Just from experience, that's my five so, cents. Some sort of time time bounding to the issues. Priority, uh, priority, and if possible, a, a yeah. I mean, it's, it's urgent, urgent, medium high, and uh, how soon do you want to have it? Great, got it. Thank you. Yeah, especially you guys have planning on doing releases. You know, you got to plan also, like from release to release, where you're gonna plan your text release. I mean, if that's if you guys are doing that, and then then it gives a sense of priority to to the to the task. Yep, no, that's a fair point. Thank you. Uh, so in the last just few minutes here, um, I did skip over a few of the items. So I'll just kind of open it for any updates from the work groups that you would like to share with the larger chaos group here. DNI or growth maturity and decline. Things that you Thanks. do goals that you have, whatever it might be. For, for GMD, just repeating once again that we won't use cases. So if you want to contribute with some, that would be great. Then that we are trying to focus right now on the code development uh, focus area as much as possible, trying to finish it. There is a pull request in the works, so any, any feedback you need is welcome before the meeting tomorrow. And hopefully during the meeting tomorrow, we're going to merge it. And uh, uh, and then that we are starting to uh, design um, uh, the specific dashboards in the more lab for some of the metrics. So you are also welcome to evaluate them and, and provide any feedback on the on those. Hopefully during the next week the first ones would be uh, would be done so that you can have a look at them and and find out and so on. Cool. Is that on one particular focus area, Jesus? Uh, you mean the dashboard? Yeah. Uh, code development too. Okay. Cool. I look forward to next week, you think? At least a prototype? I hope so. So th there is a prototype already. So uh, if you look at the minutes for the last uh, meeting last week, uh, there is a link to an issue in the uh, Sigils, which is the Gamal Lab uh, component for the dashboard, okay. where there is a link to some screenshots and some ideas. 
So in fact, anyone can collaborate just by commenting on the screenshots by saying, I don't think this is good enough. I don't think this is the kind of metric I want to see. I don't think this is the visualizations I want to see, whatever. Can you post that issue here real quickly? Yeah. Of course, I, I, I look for it and I, I put it in the in the chat in a moment. Thank you. That's uh, how UX UI uh, uh, people involved in, in the team. What's that? What's uh, that? Do you have any UX UI uh, uh, people in, involved in, in this team, in the community? UX, user experience, um, uh, user uh, interface. Um, not that I know specifically, except for the people who work as such in, in Vitorzia, but they are not that much involved. Okay. So um, if, you know, if you know about that, your, your, your experience is welcome too. No, no, no. I just, uh, I mean, I, I rely on our UX people. They, they, do, they do the magic. I just, uh, I, I make suggestions. But um, but it's always good to have a, a UX person because they they see from a different, completely different perspective. Uh, DNR, uh, hey Sue, sir, or um, <laughs> Georg or Don, sorry. Uh, I I can start. Georg can can chime in. Um, we've been focused on a few things. One is um, defining our goals. So we've been we've been working on that a bit. We've also been trying to flesh out more of the focus areas. So we've been trying to encourage people to do is just to pick one to work on and, you know, try to, try to make, pr progress those every, every week, at least a little bit. Um, and then we've also been submitting talks to conferences. So we've submitted some talks to FOSDEM, um, ChaosCon, and then I see Ray posted a link to the Open Source Leadership mm -hmm. Summit. We started talking about that as well in the last meeting, but haven't decided exactly what we're going to submit, but we will, we will submit something to that for, for DNI. We're talking about what makes sense for that particular event. Um, the other change that's happened since last month is in order to continue to help progress things, um, Georg and I have become maintainers for the project and um, in addition to um, Daniel and Emma, so that more of us can merge pull requests when we have, when we have changes and assign issues and, and things like that. So I, I do think the work is progressing a little bit more quickly now that we have um, a few more people who can who can do things. Cool. What did I miss, Georg? I think you nailed it. And there's one thing that I want to share, and that is we changed a little bit how we represent the focus areas in the repository where they're in folders and each folder has a readme. So mm -hmm. as you click through the files, you land in folders or through the hierarchies, you land in folders with the readme and that seems to work really well. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank you. Uh, just if everybody didn't see in the chat, Jesus did put it in the chat. Uh, if you could capture that for the notes, Georg. Minutes. Um, okay, cool. Thank you, work group updates. Thank you, GMD. Thank you, DNI. And then oh, Ray. Did, I have, oh. Sorry, I have just one more, one more quick thing. It's um, so Jesus has put together kind of a framework for decision making. Um, I had made some comments. We did some iteration on that. Um, what's the what's the status of that? What do we need to do to? get that sort of finalized. It seems like we've, we've done a lot of stuff on it, but nobody's actually merged anything. I don't know. I, don't know. I, didn't, I didn't merge just in case there was some more feedback, but I think we could merge because the comments in the board were positive, if I remember. Nobody has commented. You commented positively too, uh, Dan. So maybe we can just merge it. What do you yeah, think? I, I agree. I, I, think, I think people were in general in agreement. But I can, I can uh, merge it right now if you agree, but maybe it's better that somebody else dance just because I was proposing it. Mm -hmm. As a recap for those who might not be up to speed on what this decision framework states, we decided that decisions are finalized on the mailing list and even though we have these calls, not everyone can join. And so everything we discuss in calls is a uh, proposal that we will post to the mailing list for discussion. And then we just assume if there's no discussion that everyone is in accordance and lazy consensus achieved. Okay. 
So I've, I've uh, just um, put the link uh, to the pull request in the in the chat. Uh, I think, sorry, I, I, did, I did, so it's not the right one. Uh, it is, it is. So yeah. I would say that if any of you find it reasonable, just uh, merge it so that we have the decision then. I can merge it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other, we're at the end of our time, any other, uh, I, I will say this, thank you, Ray, for sharing the link with the Leadership Summit. Um, GMD, I know that DNI, that's on your radar. Um, so if, if Growth, Maturity, and Decline work group would like to put that on their radar. If people have proposals, I, I don't know, is this place big? Is this venue bigger or smaller? Does anybody have I, I mean, the hotel certainly isn't larger. I mean, the good news is closer to the airport, so you don't have to drive two hours from SFO. But uh, I don't know how large the venue is. But okay. I mean, there's obviously a track and, you know, you know, we can it might be another opportunity for a face-to-face -face, uh, governing board meeting, if that makes sense. So we could probably talk to Kate, but. Yep, I think that makes good sense because that would be March. That's pretty much, a, that's a decent cycle. Yeah. Here. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh, so I think that's gonna wrap it up unless anybody has something that they really need to say to the group here. But <laughs> other than that, uh, thanks for everybody's time and and, have a great weekend, all right? Thanks, Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.